the little wife by Pip Harry. Lottie, I tiptoe in my house after school. The blinds are down and it's dark. You can't tell how bright it is outside. So bright my eyes ache. Blue sky, blue sea. Yellow sun, yellow sand. I unpack my bag, check my homework folder, and do maths and reading cross cross legged on my br- bed. There's no room to work on the coffee table, on the or on the kitchen bench. No room for a plate or a book. Hardly even room for me and Dad. I tiptoe to the kitchen to make toast with peanut butter and a big glass of Milo, except we've run out of milk, Milo and peanut butter. Again, I tiptoed down the hall, squeezed past stacks of boxes and piles of junk, turned on the TV quietly, fold the small mountain of laundry into two neat piles and think about what's for dinner. I tiptoed not to wake Dad, who's sleeping, in his room with the door closed. At least when he's asleep, he forgets Mum is gone. He's been gone for five hundred and forty-eight days, but Dad said it feels like he just, he said goodbye to her yesterday. Not for me. I feel like every day his dad has been twice as long. Not for me. I feel like every day since she died has been twice as long. TV is boring, so I ride my bike to the Manly Lagoon at the end of our street. Dad says when he was a little boy, he used to swim and fish in the lagoon. But now it's one of the most polluted waterways on the whole east coast. In case you couldn't tell by the smell of the sewage, There were warning signs. Polluted water, no swimming, no fishing, no boating, no wading. The only ones brave enough to go underwater are the panting, splashing dogs, chasing balls and rolling in the sandy mud and me. I chain up my bike, wade in with my thick rubber boots. Past the tall sea grass, looking for water striders, mosquitoes, and fiery skimmel dragonfly which skims the water in a flash of fire. When I grow up, I'm going to go. I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna be an entomologist. That's an insect, insect scientist. Some people think they're pests, but we need bugs to live. Without bugs, there'd be no humans. They help plants and flowers grow. They make honey, wax, and silk, even medicines. They clean up by eating rubbish. Other animals eat them. A mousy lands on my arm. I feel her sting. Only the female mosquito bites. She needs the blood to make her eggs. Drink up, I whisper. She flies away, full and happy. I make a note in my bug diary. Mosquito feeding, mainly lagoon. Adis amalurus alatus. There are one million types, one million types of insect in the world, but scientists think there are around five million species haven't been discovered yet. I'm always looking for new species. Under the brown water, fish skitter past my boots. Dad said, "Whiting, ludric, bream, and mullet still live in the lagoon. That must be tough because it's become so dangerous." The water is aerobic, low in oxygen. So are the creatures that live here, that lived there, are survivors. When it gets dark, I ride my bike past the black lights and sizzling smells of Charlie's Coral Chicken Shop. Using money from the change jar, I order half a barbecue chuck and potato salad. While I wait, Charlie gives me a free dim sum. It's salty, crunchy, and delicious. I lick my fingers. You doing okay, Lottie? He says. Yeah, I guess so. 
How's your dad? I haven't seen him out surfing for ages. Tell him I said hi. I will, but dad doesn't see any of his old friends anymore. Jack, I like cricket way better than school. A gazillion times better. School's hard and you have to be on your best behaviour all the time. My teacher's always saying, Pay attention! Did you hear me, Jack? Where is your homework folder? Today my white shirt's splattered in mud from playing cricket on the oval. My school shoe's lost. My cousin's Albie nagging me to go to the batting nets instead of class like I know I should. Playing cricket on the oval. Come for a few hits, he says. Pow, pow! I'll be slurping rice bubbles out of my favourite cricket mug. I wish he wouldn't do that. I'll be slobber, yuck. Let's go. You can go to school after, Albie says. Albie's a wicked leg spinner and I need to practice my batting. Trouble is, if I wag school again, Miss Waits will put me in the tracking folder. I can't be in the tracking folder and still go to Manly Beach. That trip's a reward for being good. Like the arrows the teacher hand out for sucking up. Get ten arrows, you get a bronze star. Get three bronze stars to get a silver certificate. Big deal. It's not real silver. Our principal, Miss Mrs. Jepson, hands out the stars and certificates during all school assembly. Everybody claps. Woo! Whistles! Well, the suck up screen like they just won lotto. I've never had a bronze star. No certificate, no standing on stage, shaking Mrs. Jepson's hand. Like I'd want to. On the cricket field, it's different. I'm the best. Mad skills. Everybody just. Che- every- everyone cheers just for me. Jack, Jack, 6-6. Six, six. My back. Wax the red leather ball. Crack! Whoosh! Run, run, run! In class, my shirt itches. My shoes are too tight. I can't focus, especially in division, add in subtraction and multiplication. Stupid things I can't remember. At schools, I'm always out. Four. A. Dirk. 5W. If you want to go to the beach trip, I expect... Perfect attendance, completed homework, and exemplary behaviour, Miss White said last week. Jack, are you paying attention, she asks. Yes, miss, I said, promise, cross my heart. I did mean it last week, but today I can't find my shoe and my shirt needs a wash. And Albie won't shut up about going to the nets. Ah! Yeah, all right, I tell him. Let's go. By the way, stop using my mug. Okay, this is the plan. Starting tomorrow, I'll go to school every single day. Unless I'm sick. Really sick. Not sick of school and Mrs. Waits. Tomorrow, I'll be first class, even if I had to go barefoot. I'm going to... I'm going to catch a manly wave. Stand up and ride it all the way to the sand. In blue water that has no edges, no lane ropes, no slow laps, swimmers hogging the lanes, or nanas in caps doing splashy aero- aerobics. Water that has no end or closing time. No off season for winter. It goes on and on as far as you can see. That's what I'm trying for. Noah. As after the bell, I grabbed my bag and skied along the road, watching for cars. Surfers check their swell out their windows and don't look where they're going. I don't mind, I do it too. Check the surf forecast for wind, tides and currents. Storms on the way. I skate past South Street. Winds dropped off, swells picking up. It might be okay out there. I hide my bag in the hall, call out, Hi to Mum, who's sitting on the couch, literally looking at her phone. She can do that all day and then yell at me to get off my iPad. Why? To eat something first, she says. She goes to the kitchen and makes me a pikelet sandwich with jam and butter, still looking down at her screen. Mum, 
Why are you still looking at your phone? She looks up finally. Don't be cheeky, Noah. It's work. Sure, work. What about Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram? You're always on those. Don't give me sass today, okay? You know what my technology coordinator says. What? It's about balance. You gotta go outside and get in the fresh air, Mum. Otherwise, your brain gets fried from too much time online. Thanks for the tip, but I've also got to pay the bills. I step out of my uniform into my wetty, jump it up my body like a snake skin. There might be a storm later, Mum says, looking out the window at some faraway dark clouds. Come and spray it away if there's any lightning, she says. I will, Mum. Don't worry. Want to come out? I say for the zillionth time. It's small. What about what? Like you? She grins. You could take them all out. I encourage her. Mum used to surf. I've seen photos of her and dad on trips to Bali, where she had dreadlocks and he wore hippie pants. She wasn't bad at riding. For mum. Nah, it's been long. I've forgotten how. She looks down at her phone. Spaghetti for dinner. Paddle in by six. I'd walk over to broken glass for a spag bowl of cheese and gooey garlic bread. Mum would follow after me and sit on the beach, pretending to read. But she's mostly watching, making sure the ocean doesn't snatch me again and pull me all the way under. He doesn't let me surf when the water looks sharky. Get it? I think my parents were having a joke when they called me Noah. Surfers call sharks Noahs. It's a rhyming slang. Noah's Ark, shark. Get it? I run down the hall with my board under my arm. From my front door to the waves, there's sixty-two steps. Past the brick apartments, the tourists with their fresh sunburn, the pavement sticky with ice cream drips. I run along the sa- sand, ignoring the signs. Dangerous currents. No swimming. I'm not here to swim. Anyway, the lifesavers with their whistles, screeching megaphones, and red and yellow flags can't tell me what to do, even if they did save my life. I push into the water, my back arched, hands paddling fast. My mate Harley is already out the back. He's got all the deer, no idea. Waxed up quilt, silver board, new fins, flash re- weddy. Bowser Cook goes over the falls, gets cleaned up and caught inside. He fights the waves and they push him back. He doesn't realise the surf's in charge. Always has been. Always will be. Being on a wave is like riding a rolling ball of energy that's travelled hundreds of k's across the ocean. You've got to spend the last moments with it before it crashes into the sand and disappears. The first wave's got a good shape and it's a lefty. Oh, my favourite. I go for it, but so does Harley. Both of us charging. I get there first. Take off and grip my board like I've got suckers on my feet. I crouch low, turn across to face, heading into the green room where the waves a curling tunnel. Then Harley drops in, cutting me off. I whistle at him, but it's too late. I don't have time to bail. My board smashes into his and I tumble into the wash. Hey, that was mine, Harley shouts. Was not! Harley flips his board in the water, scowls at me. You dinged it. I look over my board, hoping it's okay. It might be odd, but fits me just right. Phew, no damage. Wave hog, Harley says. Am not. We paddle back to the lineup for a couple more. I try to shake off the angry feeling I have when I surf with Harley. I can get 15 waves before spag bowl. At least maybe 20. If Harley doesn't snake or steal any of my waves, 
I'm not expecting him to grab my wetsuit collar and yank me off my board. It pulls hard at my neck and it really hurts. Harley laughs and paddles in front of me. That's for the ding and for dropping him on my wipe. I head back to the beach, shaking all over, rubbing the sore spot on my neck. It'll probably become a bruise. Because of Harley, I didn't get a single wave, and I'm missing the best swell of the week. On the sand, I drop off my bottom, put my head between my legs and bore my eyes out. Mum sits next to me. Good waves out there. Why are you coming in so soon? Everything okay? I wipe my eyes and get it together. I'm fine, just got something in my eye. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, Mum. Can we just go home now? If the houses were teeth, the rest of Gilbert Street would be straight white and minty brushed. My place, my place would be rotten, crooked and yellow. There's so much garbage in our front garden that our neighbours leave an anonymous letter. Your house is a disgrace, an eyesore, and health hazard. Clean it up or we'll be forced to call the council. It makes me cry. Dad tries to clean up. We both do. We get gloves and garbage bags. They can't do it. It upsets him, so we stop and leave everything where it is. Even if it's junk, Dad thinks it's important. We might need this, Lottie, he says. We can't just th- I can't just throw it away. I don't think we need boxes crammed in every room or faded magazines from the 90s. Three broken microwaves, two old fridges, four rusty kitchen sinks, or oven jammed with books. I'd really like to have a friend over one day. If I had any friends. At first I told Dad, none of this junk is allowed in my room, okay? Fair enough, he agreed. My room was the only place in a house that was tidy and clean. I liked it that way. But then boxes started to sneak in. Under my bed, on top of my cupboard, books appeared in my bookcase. I can't stop the stuff growing like the growing like the mould in Dad's work shoes. Today and Saturday and we're going to the garage sales again. Can we go out for bra- breakfast like we used to, Dad? Later, he said, you know the good stuff gets taken early. Can we go to Narrabeen Lagoon then? Maybe, he says. Are you ready to go now? In a sec, I'll get my bag. I run to my room, put my bug diary, magnifying glass and insect field guard into my backpack. I'm still looking for the fiery skimmer. It leaves in streams, boggy wetlands, lakes and ponds. But it can also make a home in the city. I pull on my rubber boots and bring my swimmers just in case. Do you want this scooter, Dad says. The handle grips are missing and it's too small for me. Besides, there's no room in the boot or or on the back seat. No thanks, I like my bike. Can we go to the lagoon now? What about breakfast? Can we go to that cafe Mum likes? We used to go out for breakfast every weekend. Mum would order a flat white dad a cappino. I'd get a strawberry milkshake. Mum would eat poached eggs. Dad smashed avo on toast. I'd finish free, a free stack of pancakes with an extra ice cream. There's one more sale I'd like to go to, Dad says, as if he didn't hear me. It's not too far away. You always say that. I'll get that scooter. Fix it up for you. I don't want it. We both know he won't fix the scooter and we're not going out for breakfast at Mum's favourite cafe with the walls of watermelon, wooden floors, crayons and paper for scribbling. It's hissing, steaming coffee machine, choppy waves slapping the jetty out front. I'm not going to the lagoon, 
look for bugs and I didn't need to pack my swimmers because we're not going for a swim. I'm going to sit in the car, I say. I opened the passenger door and squeezed myself into the slice of space left for me to sit between Dad and all this push junk. Jack, my alarm goes off. I'm a drooling zombie trying to get dressed and find my school bag. I wake up my sister, Kira, who's a grumpy hen. This surfing trip better be worth it. Gotta get to school by the first bell and drop Kira at the kindy playground. My tummy's rumbling. No, no time for breakfast. Nothing in the fridge anyway. I give Kira a few coins for tuck shop, scrounged from Mum's wallet. Not much in there either. We must be broke again. Mum works hard, but we never seem to have enough money. Yeah, I did it. Made it to school on time. Only problem is, I couldn't find my lost shoe. So, I'm barefoot. Wear your shoes, Jack. Busted. Miss Waits is from the city, big on manners and rules. She makes us say pardon if we burp or if air comes out the other end. I point to my bare feet and wiggle my toes. I'm wearing my invisible shoes today, I say. That makes most of 5W laugh, but not Miss Waits. She frowns and crosses her arms. Go back home and find something to wear on your feet. We can't have students walking around barefoot. Why do I need shoes, I say. My feet are tough, just like me. I can walk over sharp rock sticks. Jack, we have rules for school uniforms. We expect students to take pride in their appearance. OK, miss, I say. Arguing with Miss Waits is a waste of oxygen. Why well, get an absent? Not if you come straight back. I'll let that office know. Here we go again. Run, run, all the way home. I look everywhere. Can't find my lost shoe. <coughs> Mum's on the couch snoring. Guess she was out all night working on a night shift at the servo. I'd wake her, but she'd say I should be at school and she won't know where my shoe is anyway. Albie's lying on the floor playing Donut Smash. My favourite da- game, but I can't play now. Have you seen my black shoe, Albie? He grunts and smashes a row of pink toast donuts, which reminds me I'm starving. Albie lives a few streets away, but his place doesn't have an Xbox, so we see him nearly every day, whether we like it or not. He's 16 and he finished school last year to do a TAFE course in mechanics, but the semester hasn't started yet, so he's got lots of free time. Haven't seen it, he says. Let's go to the river for a swim. Nah, got to find my shoe. Why? Just have to, OK? I don't tell Albie about my plan to go to the beach. He might say it's stupid. Why bother? The beach is boring, but isn't stupid to me. I search again. Cool like a commando under my dusty bed. I find dried up Vegemite host, random Lego pieces, a soggy chew toy, but no shoe. Just a quick swim, he says. Comes in my room, uninvited, flicks a towel at me. Come on, you've missed half the day now anyway. Okay, real quick, I say. He's right, by the time I get back, it'll be nearly recess. No point. So we go to the river, swing on the old tyre as high as we can. People say the river's dangerous. Rocks and old logs under the water, bad things you can't see from the smooth, milky surface. Things that might crack your back, scramble your brains, twist your neck. After I get tired of swinging, I float. Look at the sky, watch clouds drift on weird shapes. We dry off, land a gum tree and rest. My skin feels soft from the water and I close my eyes just for a minute. I'm so tired. I didn't mean to fall asleep and spend my whole day at the river. It's not my fault. Noah. Today our sports lesson is beach volleyball. 
The nets are up on the sand. Me and Harley walk to the beach together. Harley leans on my shoulder, too heavy, sharp elbows. Oi, get off, I say. Massive, swell today, he says. The surf's double overhead. Looking at it makes the itch come back. I don't want to play volleyball. I'd rather paddle out in the back, get a few waves. Surf later, says Harley. Maybe if Mum's not working. Can't you go down to the beach on your own? She likes to watch me. Make sure I'm okay. Baby, he scoffs under his breath. I don't want to surf with Harley. My ocean is my happy place and he makes it sad. Might see you out. There, he says, think I might surf on my own today. Fine, you'll probably just ding my board again anyway. With his finger, Harley flicks me hard in the middle of my cheek. It stinks. Hey, ouch. We get into pairs to practice, Harley and me together. Always together since kindy. At least I've got a mate. Addy, team up with Lottie. Addy McLean's. Has got a blonde side braid, painted nails, and a tight of circle of friends. Lottie looks so happy to get a partner that she grins from ear to ear until she hears Addie say, "Oh, do I have to?" Addie's friends giggle, and Lottie's sad and small again. Her smile gone, sun tears running down her cheeks. She wipes them away. With her sleeve and joins a pair of other kids, she doesn't even look happy when the teacher makes Addy sit on the side. It's time to play. We take off our shoes and socks. Come on, get in positions. Volley, volleyball's lame. The best bit is feeling the sand between my toes, soap spray on my tongue. Harley serves thump. And the ball smacks Lee right under the nose. She bleeds into her hands and goes to seek bay. Ease up, Harley. I say. He gives me a shove on the side, which takes my breath away. You don't want two people in sick bay, I say. Don't I? He shrugs. The worst part is he doesn't smile when he says it. Sometimes I wonder why I'm still friends with her bully and why I can't stand up to him when he says mean things. Why am I always a cow when he's around?